My name is Julian Elliott. I'm a professional landscape and travel photographer, and I also spend a lot of time doing stock photography. If you're interested in keeping up with what it is that I do, and I do quite a lot during a year, make sure you click on subscribe down there in the bottom right hand corner. So what is stock photography? Stock photography can be anything from landscape photography to travel photography, fashion and portrait, all these kind of things, things that illustrate different aspects of the world around us. And you also have two different sides to stock photography. There's the creative side, which I do, and also the other side, which I do, which is editorial photography. Creative is basically your own vision of what you think is going to sell as far as you might have a beautiful landscape in front of you, or you might have a beautiful woman and you take a photograph, or your kids doing things. These kind of things, there's all sorts of different strands to the creative side. And then on the other side, as I said, there's the editorial side. And of course, editorial has many different strands as well. So you have things such as uh, newsworthy items, such as sports and events. There's also things such as the weather, all different kind of things. Best idea with editorial photography is have a look at a newspaper or an online newspaper and you'll get a pretty good idea of editorial photography. It's basically what's going on now in the world. So what's the competition that's out there already? Now, be aware that when it comes to stock photography, there's many different image libraries out there. It's obviously such as people such as Getty, Alamy, Robert Harding, Blend and Image Source. So many different people out there. But be aware that there's millions of images out there because as we have this advent of the digital age, it's made photography a lot easier for people to do. And also there's a lot of people that are doing it that are not full-time professionals like myself. So competition is massive out there already, but on the other hand, it shouldn't be a game stopper for you. It shouldn't stop you taking your steps into the world of stock photography, because it might be that somebody down the road does stock photography that you know and you think, yeah, their images are okay, but I can do better than them. And that's always the key. So just think about it, that there is a lot of competition, but how much better can you do against that competition and then that will lead you in to the next step. The next step is both quality and quantity. Now there's something that you'll see every so often and a certain mentality that people have to say, I have 100 images in this library and this month I've sold about $30 worth. So, by the law of averages, if I have 200 images by the end of next month, that means I should be earning $60 in that month. Now, it doesn't work that way. What it comes down to is basically, the, it's not just the quantity of images that you're taking, it's also the quality of the images that you're taking. If you can have, for example, a thousand images in a particular image library, but if they don't look very good, if they're badly lit, and taken at the wrong time of day or, or whatever, then who on earth is going to buy them? So it must be quality and quantity together to be able to be able to succeed in this particular game of stock photography. Quality mark two. I want to underline quality again. It cannot be said often enough that quality will trump quantity in this game. Okay, you might have 5,000 amazing images, but really the quality does have to be there as well. You must learn when it is that you should and shouldn't take imagery in this particular field of stock photography. You see so many different things out there when people are saying, why is it that my imagery doesn't sell? And then you look at their portfolio and you get a pretty good idea. I remember a conversation with a photographer I had three or four years ago now, and he said, could you just sort of take a look and what it is that I'm doing? And I can't understand why I'm not getting regular sales. And I looked at his work and I said, do you live in the particular place that you took this photo? Yes. Why did you do it? Why did you take that photo? I know it was the wrong time of day. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have taken it. 
There you go, this underlines what I'm saying. If you're knowing places that you're going to, and even if you're going to somewhere new, climate's new, we've got so many tools at our disposal like Google Earth and the Photographer's Ephemeris that will give you the angle of light, certainly for using in travel and landscape photography. Use the tools that are there to help you get great imagery and the quality of your imagery because you need that quality to be there to be making regular sales of stock photography. The next question that photographers deal with is, do I sell my work as royalty free or do I sell it as rights managed? And it's a question that is forever enraging photographers because it gets into heavy debate on many forums around photography and stock photography as to where you should and shouldn't put your work. Royalty free, it does have a place and rights managed, it has its place as well. Royalty free, certainly the libraries such as Shutterstock, Dreamstime, Adobe Stock, Fotolia, they're dealing with royalty free. And people put their imagery in there and they're happy with what they get. I have imagery in Shutterstock, but what I do have in there is actually very old imagery. If I'm honest, there's a lot of work that's in there, but it's actually quite a, quite a number of years old now. And, but I'm also putting stuff into places like Robert Harding World Imagery and my main image library, which is the Getty Images Library. And Getty Images is world renowned for its royalty rights managed uh, stock of images. So each library has its own different intricacies that you're going to have to deal with. And you'll have to decide, do you want to go the royalty free route or do you want to go the rights managed route? One thing that I will say for rights managed is if your work happens to be stolen, and this does happen a lot now because of the, the Google search imagery, the MSN search, all these type of search engines that are indexing our images. If your work gets stolen and it's rights managed, you can actually got a better chance of going to a particular infringer and saying, you've stolen my work. Unfortunately, you're going to have to remove this work and this is what you're going to have to pay. If it's rights managed, you've got a better chance of actually getting a better price for the work than if it's in royalty free. And I say that from experience of actually dealing with a lot of infringements myself, because I've heard the line so often, but why are you charging me this when I can go to Shutterstock and I can buy it for 10 pounds? Fine, try and go try and find the particular image in Shutterstock for 10 pounds. You're not going to because that particular image is rights managed. So it's a lot easier to justify to a potential infringer a rights managed price than it is a royalty free. So be very cautious as to where it is that you're going to put your imagery if it goes into royalty free or rights managed. Royalty free is gonna give you a quick buck. Rights managed isn't, but if something goes wrong, it is better if it's dealt with under the rights managed model. Number six, you must learn to accept and expect rejection when you're sending images to the various image libraries. One of the sole image libraries that I can think of right now off the top of my head where you're not going to get rejection if you pass the quality control is Alamy because Alamy will pretty much take anything and everything as long as it passes their quality control. And that is basically, and it should be, for, and it's the same for any library, is making sure that your images are clean and free of dust spots and things such as chromatic aberration. However, there are some traditional libraries that are still out there that you will send them a batch of images of say, 100 images. And what they will say is, we want these 25 because we think these 25 over here have great sales potential, but the 75 over here, we're not interested and any similars you can't send off to another library and all the others are rejected. It may be disheartening, but it's being done for a reason. The libraries have better data than us as to what is actually selling out there. So don't look at rejection as failure, look at it as something to spur you on and actually go, okay, they've taken this, what is it that I need to do to up my game? So if I'm sending them another 100 images, Instead of them taking 25, they're actually gonna take 100 images. So look at rejection 
and learn how to deal with it and how it can push your work forward. Number seven is variety. Now, I started out as a dedicated landscape photographer and I learned very quickly in the world of stock photography that if you try to do just landscape photography, you're not gonna get anywhere. The days of being, earn, being able to earn a lot of money from stock photography, from landscape and stock photography, they are long, long gone. And it's just not gonna happen now. Maybe on some of the microstock libraries, you'll be earning money, but not a lot from just landscape photography. But it is far, far better to have a good, wide variety of imagery in your stock photography portfolio. The wider and the more subjects, the type of subjects that you're shooting, the better chance it is that you're actually going to sell your work and keep selling it regular and also keep adding to it. So learn to get out of just one particular frame of mind and saying, I'm a landscape photographer, that's all I do, I don't want to do anything else. As far as stock photography goes, you can forget that. You must learn to adapt and you must learn to have a lot of good variety, of good quality images that are of a variety in stock photography. Number eight is which library do you go to? Now there are many different libraries out there that you can go to, so you have quite a wide variety of choice. People such as Getty Images or Shutterstock, they have pretty much a wide variety of subjects that they're dealing with. You can find pretty much anything in both of those particular libraries. But you also get other, li other libraries that are dealing with specific areas of photography. So for example, another place that I submit my work to is called Robert Harding World Imagery, and Robert Harding are pretty much dealing with travel photography. They want subjects from across the world showing the cities, the landscapes, the people, and anything and everything else that is travel photography and the wide breadth of travel photography around the world that we can, that we can drum up as photographers. There are other libraries I think it's called SPL, Science Picture Library. They're dealing with images on a scientific level. And you also get other libraries that are dealing with things on a food level. And then, if I remember correctly, I found one a while ago that was dealing with things on, an, on a drink level, on an alcohol level. So there's many different libraries and then many different subsections of libraries that you can be dealing with. Who you go to is up to you. I'm not going to advise you as to who you should go to because you'll find that one library will deal with you in a particular way and one library is better with dealing with you in a particular way than another library. So do your research, see who's out there and you'll come across various libraries that will suit your needs. Try all of them and see how far and how well you do in a particular library and to know whether you want to dedicate your time to that particular library or libraries. Number nine, you must be in this for the long term. And I know people are going to say to me, how long is it going to take me before I'm earning $10,000 a year from my stock photography? And it's not as simple as that. You must build up your portfolio. You must have that quality in there. And then also a lot of other factors come into this, such as who is look actually looking at the imagery. Is the right client looking at it, which then comes down to the library and how much they've got to spend, how much then the library is actually going to let that image go for um, and it's just, just so many different things as to how much it is you're actually going to get what i will say is if you keep looking at everything that i'm saying and adding in everything you will get returns but what you're going to get is very much dependent on the library because it will be the library in the end that dictates how much it is you'll earn but you have to be in this for the long term you will see returns but it's just there's so many different factors that's in this. So if I give you an example from the magazine industry, right now a photography magazine that's giving you guidance on how to take photos, they might be right now working on the issue for autumn because they're working that far in advance. So if you go out in October this year, in October 2018, and you start taking autumn images, 
you might not see them sold to a particular magazine until six months later until they've gone around a particular cycle. Things do go in cycles, so it might be that your summer imagery actually sells in the winter, that your spring imagery sells in the depths of autumn. So be aware of this, things will go in cycles and you will get returns, but it just depends on what the customer is looking for at the particular time, who they are and what their different deadlines are. So there's many, many different things you have to be aware of as to when you're actually going to get your returns. And as I said, you must be in it for the long term. So of course I have left the best question to last. The ultimate question is of course, people will say, so what sells? Well, there's, how do you approach this? It's difficult because I am in two minds as to exactly tell you what does and doesn't sell. I have my own sales records to see what's sold for me, so I have a pretty good idea what sells for me. But what sells for me might not sell for you. So you have to bear that in mind. If you look on particular forums, such as the Anime forum, you'll see that there is a thread each month that says, have you found any images sold by Alamy? Is it helps people to keep an, an idea of where their work is being sold because sometimes things don't get reported. What I would urge you to do is to, one, take a look at the thread and you can get a good idea of what is selling. However, don't look at the thread and go, somebody sold a great picture of the Eiffel Tower today. I know, I'm going to go to France, I'm going to Paris, and I'm going to take a picture of the Eiffel Tower. It just does not work that way. It's what the client is looking for at the particular client, at the particular time, what contracts and what library the client is locked into, what price they can get it for. There's so many different factors as to what it is that's going to be selling it at a particular time, certainly on the creative side. On the editorial side, it's different again because there's obviously newsworthy items that are going around. So if you just look in any newspaper, you'll see current events and what's going on. So it could be the weather, or it could be a concert. It could be, for example, in my hometown at the moment, I'm from the city of Salisbury in the south of England. And I'm sure if you're watching the news at the moment, you cannot have missed what is going on in Salisbury right now. That's, editor that's the editorial side and that particular story is being sold pretty much every single day as far as editorial because there are, it's a continuing and developing events that's going on all the time. But there's sports, there's just a myriad of things that go into editorial photography and what is selling as editorial photography. So a tiny bit of uh, insight maybe as to what it is you can be selling and what actually is selling but I don't want to say too much from my own perspective because as I've alluded to in other videos in the past, you wouldn't expect Samsung to walk into Apple and say, well, can you tell us what your latest invention is because we'd love to do something similar and we'd love to sell something similar. What do you think the answer is going to be? There are ways and means of getting a good idea of what is selling out there. So just have a little thought, Have have think about it properly, think logically, and you will get a good idea of what is selling out there. So that's how I'm going to conclude this particular episode of this week's vlog. What's coming up in the next vlog? Well, in a few days time, I'm off to another city and I'm there and I'm dedicating my time to that particular city. I have five nights there. What I might be doing, and I'm not sure if it's going to work yet or not, I might see if I can do a daily vlog again and see how hard it will be for me to do the imagery and a daily vlog. Certainly got a few ideas. I've got a few things lined up as to what it is that I'm going to be doing in this particular city. So that will be coming up. Until then, thanks again to all my subscribers, past, present, and hopefully future. Until the next time, Take care and I'll see you soon.